Hello and welcome to this episode of the Toronto Maple Leafs Be a GM. So, as you know, in the last episode, if you have not watched that, go watch that now before you get spoiled. Well, you probably already have, but um, we lost in Game 5 to the New York Rangers. So, this episode is the off-season episode. So, we will be going over everything that happened in the off-season, starting with the playoff recap. So, here's how the West shaped out. Colorado beat Los Angeles, San Jose beat Edmonton, St. Louis beat Chicago, and Nashville beat Winnipeg. So in the second round, San Jose won four games to two over Colorado, and St. Louis won four games to two as well over Nashville, and St. Louis made it to the cup finals, winning four games to one. And here's how the East turned out. Florida beat Montreal, Tampa Bay beat Detroit, we lost to New York, and Carolina beat Pittsburgh. So, Tampa swept Florida in a battle of Florida, and New York beat Carolina, and the Rangers defeated Tampa Bay four games to three to move on to the cup final. So, we lost to somebody who won the Eastern Conference, which I'm okay with. And your Stanley Cup champions are the New York Rangers, who defeated the St. Louis Blues four games to two. So, we ended up losing to the eventual Stanley Cup champions, so that's not too bad. And so now is the awards recap. So the Stanley Cup champions, as you already know, were the Rangers. But the Calder Cup champions were the Chicago Wolves. The President's Trophy went to the Chicago Blackhawks. And the AHL version of that went to the San Antonio Rampage. The Art Ross Trophy went to Joe Thornton. And the AHL version of that went to Tanner Pearson. The James Norris Memorial Trophy went to Alice Goligosky. Not sure about that one. And uh, the AHL version of that went to Tim Erickson. The Lady Bang Memorial Trophy went to Joe Thornton. The Calder Memorial Trophy went to Nathan McKinnon. And the HL version went to Ben Smith. Uh, excuse me one second. Con Smythe Trophy went to Henrik Lundqvist. And the HL version of that went to Jake Allen. The Vesna Trophy went to Andre Pavlik in surprise fashion. And the HL version of that went to Peter Mrazek. The William M. Jennings Trophy went to Corey Crawford and Jason LaBarbera. And the HL version of that went to Neil Strorp and Jack Campbell. The Bill Master Tim Memorial Trophy went to Travis Hamnick, and the AHL version of that went to Ben Smith. The Frank J. Selkie Trophy went to, surprisingly enough, Pavel Datsuk. The Ted Lindsay Award went to Sidney Crosby, and the AHL version of that went to Tanner Pearson. And the Maurice Richard Trophy went to Joe Pavelski, and the AHL version of that went to Ben Smith. Now here are the retirements. I sorted this by NHL games played. Not a single goalie retired this year. So we have Todd Bertuzzi, Chris Pronger, Chris Phillips, Saku Koivu, Hal Gill, Michael Hanzus, Peter Sikora, who was a free agent, Matthias Oland, Jeff Halpern, Lubomir Vizhnovsky, Mark Savard, Samuel Paulson, who was a free agent, Bryce Salvador, Michael Samuelson, Merrick Malik, a free agent. Yarka Rutu, also a free agent. Mark Eaton, free agent. Sean Thornton, retired. Mike Weaver, Marcus Nielsen, a free agent. Radic Martinek, Vili Niemannen, Brian Wilsey, Josh Green, Christian Backman, Eric Perrin, Jason Krog. And now we're getting into more and more and more free agents. So the interesting thing about all of this is that Mark Tabrodeur, did not retire, so New Jersey still has Broder. So I'll only be showing the first round of how it was picked. So Nikita Sherback went number one, Ekblad two, Reinhardt three, uh, McCowan, Richie, Siebenaller, Mistili, Bailey, Edmonds, Hora, Thomas, Gwindaw, LeBlanc, Wesley, Nedelkiewicz, Dalkal, and Laura Kynan. Then it was our turn to pick, and I was mainly deciding between Jake Vertanen and William Nylander. And in the end, we ended up going with William Nylander. William, the son of former NHLer Michael, is a one-dimensional player, undersized at 5'10", but he, he possesses such skill and offensive talent that it's hard to pass up on him that late in the first round. As you can see here in these clips, he's playing against men and just skating past them and getting wonderful scoring chances, as you see here. But he's a great talent to pick up in the first round. The first round rounds off with Dreisaitl, Mayho, Vertanen, Hall, Pepperni, Hortichuk, Hosang, Perron, Pepin, 
D'Angelo, Shovel Dave, and Hauser. With our second round selection, we were looking at a few players. Andre Case, Ralph, Hayden, Tambellini, all those kind of guys. But in the end, we ended up going with six foot one Andre Case. Case is listed as a two-way forward, but I see him as more of an offensive two-way forward. He's got vision like no other, especially as he was playing against men. He's not ready yet for the NHL, but will be in a few years' time. With our third round pick, I was looking at two different people. Brendan Lemieux, a power forward from Barry, and Julius Honka, an offensive defenseman, and we went with Honka. Honka has room to grow defensively, but he's such a great offensive defenseman talent the scouts would not accept it if we passed up on this guy in the third round. A phenomenal wrist shot and vision, similar to Case, like no other. A great pickup for the third round. In the fourth round, we didn't have our eyes on anybody except for Matt Rupert, and we'll show you why. His brother Ryan's already in the organization, so that's a bonus chemistry-wise, and Matt is similar to in style to Leo Komarov. He's got some offensive talent, but he's known for his peskiness, and that's what I love. Not too many prospects in the fifth round appealed to us, except for Alex Lintuniemi at 6'3", 229. He's a great offensive defenseman prospect that we could build for the future. As shown in this clip here, Lintuniemi is a big body that's not afraid to hit. We had two sixth round picks, and with one of them we went with Max Eafrady. Eafrady is 6'2", and 221 pounds. He's a similar force to Alex Lintuniemi. But we couldn't pass up on another huge body in the sixth round. Eafrady can also fight, as you see here in this fight with Vancouver Canucks prospect Bo Horvat. He wins this fight handedly. After a bit of jostling, he decides to lower the boom. He is also the son of former Toronto Maple Leaf Al Eafrady. And with our second. Sixth round pick, we decided to take Dominic Schwerger. Schwerger is a big Austrian sniper standing at six feet tall, 208 pounds. He's a good offensive talent for his sixth round. Not really expecting much of him, but he's worth a shot. In the seventh round, we decided to take Enforcer from China, Gordy Sweeney. He's six foot eight, 253 pounds, a left winger. We said, What the heck? It would be fun to have him on the team. So here's a rundown of how our draft ended up. Our first round pick, William Nylander, is a 58 overall with 4.5 gold star potential. Second round pick, Andre Case, is a 51 overall, 3.5 gold stars. Our best player was our third round pick, actually, with Julius Honka being a 65 overall and 4.5 red stars. Our fourth round pick, Matt Rupert, was a 58 overall, being 2.5 gold stars. Fifth round pick, Alex Lintuniemi, was a 53 overall at 2.5 gold stars. Sixth round pick, Max Eafrady, 56 overall, 2.5 gold stars. Sixth round pick, Dominic Schwerger, was a 51 overall at 2.5 gold stars. And our seventh round pick was a waste. We picked Gordy Sweeney, 36 overall, 1 star potential. He's not even a good fighter. And so now we're on to the re-sign recap. So here is a list of everything that happened. So red indicates a 2A deal. So we released a few players. Cameron Abney, who didn't see any action in the Marlies, it wouldn't this year, so we decided to release him. Drew McIntyre, because of his age. Troy Bodie, because he didn't perform very well. Mason Raymond, because he didn't perform very well, and we're looking to retool that depth, trying to get some more depth scoring. And Mason Raymond was an odd man out, along with Nikolai Kuhlman was also an odd man out. So we decided to release Kuhlman and Raymond. Raymond also dropped two overalls to 79. That also influenced our decision. Now, TJ Brennan, he was asking for a lot of money over three years, so we just tendered a qualifying offer. Uh, James Reimer was asking for way too much money, so we just qualified an offer. We re-signed Brandon Cozen at a two-way deal over one year for 650000 and Peter Holland was asking for a two-year one-way deal at less than a one mil, so we agreed with a one-year max two-way deal. So next year, he will most likely be on the roster. If not this year, if something happens, he could slot in on the third or fourth line as depth scoring. 
We re-signed Jamie Clement to a one-year deal at $1.350 million. Jerry Domingo, we re-signed at $600,000 on a two-way deal, two years. Same thing with Trevor, Trevor Smith. He adds leadership to that Marlies team, which is always good. Carter Ashton, we got two years, 700000 Julius Honka, who is a 65 overall, meets my requirements as a rookie, being 60 overall plus. Um, so he got an entry-level deal. Spencer Abbott, 710 over three years. Now the three main roster players, Dave Bolin dropped to an 82, but we still got him for three years at 2.25. Jake Gardner, same deal as Dave Boland and Cody Franz, and we re-signed to a big deal, 3.5 over four years. So here are the top free agents. We have just under $10 million to spend, and the top free agents are Ian White, Chris Higgins, Sammy Salo, Mazaros, Ole Okinen, Willie Mitchell, Wojtek Wolski, and Mike Santarelli. So not a very good free agents class at all, but there are some guys that would fill out our team and our team needs. The first player we offered to was Mike Santarelli, a three-year deal at $2.5 million. He would fill out the third line pretty well. As we released two of our uh, third liners to free agents, we had to pick up two more third liners, and we decided to go with Chris Higgins as our other one. He could also play second-line minutes. We're offering $3.3 million over two years. And for the fourth line, we decided to try to sign Chad LaRose, at a $1.5 million deal over two years. For the Marlies, as we didn't have enough centers, we decided to sign former Marley, Daryl Boyce, to a one-year $600,000 deal. Because we released uh, Drew McIntyre, we had to sign another goalie to be the minor league starter, and we went with Anders Nielsen, the big goalie from Sweden, formerly of the Islanders. In our first trade of the offseason, we traded Colton Nord to Colorado for a fifth-round pick. Now the players are starting to get back to us, and Chad LaRose is our first signing of the year. We made space for him by trading Colton Orr, so he'll slot in at that third line, on uh, that fourth line right wing. He has great discipline. He's good at shot blocking. He's got nice speed. He's aggressive, and he's got poise. 90 discipline, and all the rest are 85s. So Chad LaRose will make a great fourth liner and could even give some time on the penalty kill for us. Our second signing is Daryl Boyce. Boyce, the former Toronto Marley, will add veteran leadership to that Marley team. He'll slot in on the third line center. He's got good body checking. And our third, our third signing is Mike Santarelli, who will be playing right wing third line. He's a great two-way forward. He's got great offensive talent, but he's also got some defense to him. He's got an 86 power wrist shot, but he's got 85 offensive and defensive awareness, which is something that I love, as you see here in these few clips. Our biggest signing of the offseason is Chris Higgins. Higgins is going to slot in at that third line left wing spot or even challenge uh, Clarkson for that second line right wing spot. Higgins has got 87 slap shot power, but he's also got some good checking abilities and body checking and stick checking both at 86 and he's got 86 speed acceleration and agility which is going to make for a deadly third line talent and as you see here he's just laying the body to everybody in practice along with blocking a pass there and Andres Nielsen signs as well he's great stick side both 82 high and low he's got 83 poke check and 83 passing and as you see here his best save of training so far has been that holzer stop and now the biggest thing to happen in the offseason james reimer has been sent an offer sheet of 5.065 million for three years by the new york islanders we do not have the cap space to agree to that so we will take the compensation and acquire a first round pick and a third round pick in the upcoming draft from the islanders so that could be huge because you never know. We could package our first round pick, their first round pick, and a prospect for Connor McDavid. So after that, we didn't have a backup anymore. So we had to go and acquire Cam Talbot. We traded Jamie Devane, who wasn't going to get any action in the AHL this year, along with the Islanders' third round pick, which we acquired through the James Reimer uh, offer. 
and the Colorado fifth round pick in which we got from the Colton Nord trade. So really, now the James Reimer deal is now Cam Talbot in a first round pick for James Reimer. So that's not too bad. And so now here is a roster rundown. Phil Kessel at an 88. James Van Riemsdyk now at an 87. Kadri stays at an 85. Dion Phaneuf stays at an 85. Joffrey Lupul at an 85. Tyler Bozak drops to an 84. Morgan Riley jumps up huge to an 84. Tim Gleason at an 84. Jake Gardner up to an 83. David Clarkson stays at an 83. Franz into an 83. Gunnarsson, 83. Dave Bullen drops to an 82. TJ Brennan is an 81 now. I think that we got to sign this guy. This guy's going to be good, I think, especially in the future. So I'm thinking about trading Tim Gleason potentially and to make room for TJ Brennan. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Um, so, yeah, TJ Brennan, that's the big question. We also got Fraser McLaren now in 80 overall, so he's not just an enforcer. He can actually do stuff. Jim Clement, 79. Peter Holland, 79. Trevor Smith, 74. Brandon Cozen up to in 73. Connor Brown now can play in the AHL at a 73. Kevin Marshall to a 72. Tyler Bake 68. Josh Levo, 68. Peter Granberg, 68. McKegg at a 68. William Nylander at a 58. Rupert at a 58. Herzog at a 56. Eafrady at a 56. Verhage at a 54. Lintu Niemi at a 53. Case at a 51. Zwerger at a 51. And Sweeney at a, 50, at a 36, excuse me. Now we got Higgins at an 83. Santorelli at an 81. Corbinian Holzer jumps up to an 80, so he could be contending for a bottom six spot. LaRose, 78. Ashton jumps up to a 75. Bartley at a 75. We acquired him for Paul Ranger, if you remember. Spencer Abbott at a 75. Kenny Ryan at a 74. Domingo, 73. Gerald Boyce, 73. Mac William jumps up to a 70. David Brohl, 70. Brad Ross, 69. Percy at a 68, but his potential drops to a 1.5 star. That's rough. 66 overall for Gauthier. 65 for Honka. 63 for Finn. 59 for Ryan Rupert. And goalies, we got Bernier at 85, Talbot at 78, Nielsen 75, Spark 63, Gibson 62, and Bebos 54. And so now here is the preseason lineup. Take a look. So that's what the forwards lineup will look like for the first preseason game, the one that we will be showing to you. So pretty good lineup. We got a lot of rookies in there. We got our three new signings up top on the first line. Honka will be playing first line minutes. We also got Bartley, Percy, McWilliam, Finn, and Holzer in there. Not too shabby of a defensive lineup as well. We have a better preseason lineup than we did last year, that's for sure. And in goal, we have Camp Talbot backed up by Bernier. Each of the goalies, Bernier, Talbot, uh, Gibson, Sparks, and... Nielsen will all get a chance to play in the preseason, but this will make it the end of the preseason, not preseason, excuse me, the end of the offseason video. It took a while to edit and record everything, so I'd really appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button and subscribed if you enjoyed this for more sports gaming content. Soon will be more next-gen um, titles, including NHL 15, Madden 15, so subscribe if you want to see some franchises and BGMs and all that. So, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Sorry I forgot to mention this in the actual video, but um, I forgot to mention where the players we released went. So, um, there was a few players that didn't sign with anybody. Drew McIntyre, one of them. Troy Bodie, another. And Cameron Abney, not surprising. So, those three did not sign with anybody. But, Mason Raymond signs with division rival Buffalo Sabres. So I'll have to get in a Buffalo game for you guys this year. And Nikolai Kuhleman exits the East and is headed West to play with Nate McKinnon, Duchesne, Landis Cog, all them guys. He's headed to Colorado. He's also going to be reuniting with Colton Orr. Uh, so I thought I should just mention that. 
before the end of this episode. So I'm sorry about forgetting to mention that, but I'll see you the next time. Goodbye.